What is going on, family? So I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Resurrection Sunday, about Easter, what it what it actually is. So on Friday, Good Friday, which is the Friday before Easter, Jesus, Jesus was betrayed by one of his friends. Imagine somebody in your circle, your friend group, they betrayed you. But not just like, oh, like, tell a lie on you or whatever. But I'm talking about they betrayed you by having people come kill you, basically, for 30 pieces of silver. So Judas, Judas um, is carry on. So he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of sil silver to the Romans. And Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane right before that because he knew that Judas was going to betray him. And at the Last Supper, Jesus' last meal, he said, one of you is going to betray me. And everybody was looking at all of his disciples were looking at each other like, who is it? Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him before Judas even knew he was going to betray him. And then so Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was he was praying God like, please, please, I've lived this perfect life. I haven't done anything wrong. I've done everything that you asked me to, God. Why? Why am I going to die on this cross? Before anything ever happened, before the Romans even came, Jesus knew because God told him. Because God is all knowing. And so Jesus was like, please pass the cup to someone else. And then God told him, no, this is what I sent you for the whole time. And you knew that. So you just got to stay in. And then God told Jesus. He showed him what was going to happen in your life. What things you were going to do. And then so Jesus was like, OK. OK, I'm going to pay the price. But at the same time. The devil was tempting Jesus not to. Not to go on the cross to pay for your sins, not to set you free, not to break your your chains, not to relieve you of depression. So. So then the Romans come and they find Jesus and then um, they they take Jesus and basically to summarize it, like some stuff happens like Peter cut off, cut off one of the um, the Romans ears and then. And then Jesus was like, like, whoa, Peter, chill out. And then and then so then he picked up the soldier's ear and he put it back onto his head. And then he, then he was like, I'm sorry, basically. And then so the soldier was just in awe that he just had his ear cut off. And then Jesus, the man that they were coming to kill, literally just put his ear back on. And then like. Not no sewing or anything, just back like nothing ever happened. And then so, so they take Jesus back to like um the Roman like castle or whatever, and they start to torture Jesus, not just like, not just like beating him, but I'm talking about flogging and scorning him, like whipping him with a whip that has razors on the end of it. And if you hit it, hit a piece of wood with it, it the blades would get stuck in the wood. And so, so they were whipping Jesus hundreds, thousands of times with his whip, with razors, and it would rip out his skin at every hit. And his back was literally raw. Then they flipped him over, put him on his back, so he was laying on his raw back. It was all gashed up, all cut up. Like, like way worse than than any slave or anybody who's ever taken any punishment ever. And then so then they started whipping him on the front until basically almost all his skin was gone. 
And then after that, they stopped and then they put the crown of thorns on him. And then the, it has it had big thorns on it. They put it on his head and then they hit it into his head so that the, the crowns would go and pierce his skin. And, and they wanted it to go into his skull. So the crown of thorns wasn't just for looks. It, it represented something, though. When I was seven, I, we, I was in class and we were talking about the crown of thorns. And I told my teacher, I think the crown of thorns represents Jesus because he went 33 years perfectly without sin. And the devil's temptations are like bubbles and they try to get into his head, but then they hit the crown of thorns and then they just pop. Like, that's, that's really the, I didn't really know at the time, but God, that's, God called me to speak his word and tell people about what he has done and just the miracles. But anyways, so Jesus, Jesus was beaten and he had the crown of thorns just pushed in his head. So he was bleeding and he, he was, he could barely even walk. He could barely even, he couldn't even stand up. They had to drag him. And so they just love torturing Jesus. But Jesus said, one of the famous quotes Jesus ever said, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they have done. Because they don't, they don't know what they're doing. And so they didn't know that, well, they probably, some of them probably knew, but they didn't know the ex extent that Jesus was going to die on the cross for your sins and pay the price. So later, um, they didn't feed Jesus for days or anything. So when it comes to the day where Jesus was going to die on the cross for your sins. So they made Jesus carry his own cross. And there was a thief and um, a murderer. They were being crucified right next to him. But they didn't have to carry their whole cross. They just carried the arm part, right? And then so, but Jesus had to carry the whole thing, which is like the cross that you see today. He had to carry the whole thing, but it was wooden. It weighed hundreds, thousands of pounds. So they made him carry it for miles and miles and miles. And as he was carrying it, they were whipping him and beating him, throwing rocks at him cussing at him and he could barely even walk let alone carry his own body weight they made him carry a cross miles so jesus is going to the cross then they beat him so bad he couldn't even carry the cross on his own and he had had one of his disciples to help him so his disciple helped him um carry the cross basically to the site he was crucified at and then to fast forward, so the pain that Jesus went through, they tied him to the cross. Then they opened up his hands and they put, they put nails through his hands. And so it's just, just imagine someone putting a whole like nail like the size of a railroad spike through your hand if not bigger and so they put a, a, a nail through each of his hands and they dislocated his arms because because it wouldn't fit like he they had to stretch they stretched his arms and it still wouldn't fit and then so they dislocated his arm and popped it out of the socket so it would fit so they could nail his hands then they nailed his feet together. But before they could do that, they had to break his ankles. So <laughs> these people were sick. But so they could they could nail his feet together so he could fit on the cross. And then so Jesus, then they put up the they they flipped him over on his on his stomach. While his nails and hand and feet are hands or feet are nailed to the cross, and then they flipped him over on his stomach, 
and then hit the the bottom of the nail so then it, it, it wouldn't slide out so it wouldn't come off and then they flipped them back over then they put them up and then he was hanging from his hand the holes in his hands that had nails in them and his feet he was hanging that's when Jesus took all the sins of the world he became all the sins that we would ever commit all the sins that you would ever commit. He became that, but he lived perfectly. So he became sin. And the pain was so unbearable that his sweat turned into blood. So he started to sweat blood and it would hit the ground his blood was so precious that it actually brought someone, some people to life. And it would like hit the ground and then like have some weird effect like tss. So then fast forward and Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And then so to make sure that he was dead, they stabbed him in his side with a spear. And so... So then blood just started to leak out and then it got all over the Roman soldier's face. And then he could just feel like 100% the Holy Spirit. But more than that, just he could, he knew that was the savior of the world. He knew that he just messed up. So he got on his knees and he was just like in awe, like probably talking to God. I don't know. I would have been doing that if I was in, I was him. But so then they take Jesus down from the cross and they wrap him in a shroud. And um, so shroud is kind of like a cloth like they I guess they used to wrap people up in like after they were crucified or after they died. And then so they placed him in a tomb. But in John chapter 19 verse 41 through 42 it says where jesus was crucified there was a tomb and so this tomb has never had anybody in it and it was jewish preparation day and jesus was jewish but but they had to have a tomb that was perfect special unused for the savior of the world because this wasn't just a normal crucifixion. It just wasn't a normal death. It's so powerful that it would affect your life and change your life, save your life to this very day and on till eternity. So, so in the Bible, it skips from um, John 19 to John 20. And so it goes from Friday to Sunday, Sunday morning. So um, it was dark on Sunday morning and Mary Magdalene came to to visit Jesus' tomb. And so Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And how Jesus and Mary Magdalene met was she was being stoned in the village by the villagers. So that's like when they throw stones and rocks at someone to basically shame them. And so, so Jesus stood in front of Mary Magdalene and he, he said, when he first met her and he said, whoever is without sin, whoever is without fault, cast the next stone. And then everybody just dropped their stones and they just, they just dropped everything and walked away because we're all sinners. We're all not perfect. And then so, so back to when she came to the tomb on Sunday morning, it was dark. And so the tomb where Jesus was laying, it there was a boulder that covered the, the tomb slash like, it was kind of like a cave thing. And then so it took 10 men to roll away the boulder. But the boulder that was in front of Jesus's tomb um, was really heavy and it took 10 men to to roll it away. So Jesus faced 
an unbearable pain just for you, just so he could pay the price for your sins, for your mistake. He didn't have to, but he did. And that's the greatest sacrifice, the greatest payment, the greatest thing anybody has ever done in existence. Imagine you having your one and only son and giving, letting him die a and not even live a short life just for other people. That's a really selfless act. The most selfless act there has ever been. So it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And for whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Most people only know that verse, but he goes on to say, God did not send his son to earth, to the world, to condemn it. So he didn't send, he didn't send Jesus, God didn't send Jesus on this earth to be like, okay, look at me and make everybody else look bad because we're sinners. No. It says that Jesus came to save the world, not condemn it. He came to be an example to help you, support you every day in your life, but also to be an example that you can look up to. So you're looking up to him as an example of how to live your life. But at the same time, he's helping you to achieve what he, his life. So just as he live, you should live your life as Christ died. So basically, that means you should turn from your old ways. And another word for turn is to repent. I know you've probably heard that word. So repentance means to turn from sin, turn from the things that aren't helping you in life, turn from the things that you're doing wrong, turn from the things that aren't going to benefit you at all, turn from the things that the devil is telling you to do, turn from the things that are worldly. So repent, repent, turn from everything that is not Jesus to live your best life. He is every best thing just waiting for you. He's already paid the price. He just wants you to receive the blessings by calling on his name and you giving your life to him. That's all he asks. He paid the price and your only job is to have faith and to trust. Because sometimes when life is getting hard, all you can do is pray. And when you talk to God, you talk to God just like you're talking to your friend. Just like you're talking to me. It's just a normal conversation. Like right now, I'm basically talking to God. Because this is exactly how you talk to God. So, I'm blessed so I made this video. God woke you up today. And he woke me up today, so that means we're blessed. And even if you're not watching this video, you're still blessed. Thank you for tuning in, family. I love you, and God loves you. All right, good night.